specifically for the mid-cap market, um, considering how this sort of crisis of confidence or the trust deficit has really built up. Uh, so the question is this, I mean, are you expecting 2019 to be an absolute washout year for mid-caps? So should we sort of write off the hopes of a recovery in this calendar year? Or do you think there's some light at the end of the tunnel? Uh, it's already been a very tough uh, last 15, you know, 18 months for the mid-caps. So if you look at the mid-cap index, it is still, I think, 15, 16% below the December 17 levels. I am talking about the Nifty mid-cap 100. And uh, more importantly, as we've been highlighting, uh, the polarization in the market just keeps, uh, you know, getting more and more entrenched, be it Nifty or be it uh, Nifty mid-cap. In fact, if you look at Nifty top 15 stocks, uh, they are up around 11 odd percent uh, in the last uh, 15 odd months or 18 odd months if you replot the index uh, using just 15 Nifty stocks and the rest 35 are down. Same is the case for uh, Nifty Midcap. Again, if you take the top 15 stock of Nifty Midcap 100, they are up, I think, 8%. Whereas the bottom, uh, uh, the, not bottom uh, specifically, but the rest 85 are down around 21 odd percent. So essentially, it's a case of a market which is grappling with two big uh, underlying things. One is the economic slowdown. Uh, more importantly on the consumption side because the investment has already been, uh, has always been very patchy led more by public investment. And secondly, whatever earnings uh, growth that we have seen has been very, very narrow. In fact, if you look at FY20 expectations also, 70% uh, of our incremental Nifty earnings for FY20 is expected to come from BFSI. So what is that telling you? That is telling you that X of BFSI, there's hardly any uh, earnings recovery. And with more and more evidences of slowdown uh, getting out, I think there is more downside risk for the earnings estimate for FY20. Uh, compared to what we were thinking three months back or six months back. So in this sort of an environment, the natural tendency is obviously to flock towards quality, and that's what we witnessed, be it in mid caps or be it in the large caps. And I think that will continue till we get more evidence of some sort of a recovery. I think there are more headwinds actually. Uh, monsoon has not seen any progress so far. And on top of that, the evidences of rural consumption slowdown uh, is there. Auto numbers haven't improved. So it's going to be a bit of a tough grind for the market for the next couple of months. Okay, okay by the way, just look at Mind Tree, and you know why it's important is that uh, we know that uh, uh, this, the, that open offer which is on and uh, Nalanda Capital has exited. Uh, now, uh, th today's chart uh, uh, on Mind Tree and also we'll uh, pull out uh, uh, the, the June futures and July futures. Now that stock is under some selling pressure. And the June future is now trading at 20 point discount. So, uh, so uh, you know, heavy shorting now happening on that stock. Uh, that open offer was keeping the price at around 980. Also, if you see the July futures, which is very interesting, perhaps telling you about the hedging going on and also post that open offer, is that the fair price? 879 on July futures. So, as 68 point discount, which is opened up as far as July futures are concerned on mine tree so just just uh, keep that stock on your radar it's really fascinating the way this one's moving in cash in june futures and in july futures uh, uh, gautam hi good morning uh, your, your thoughts on it and uh, i mean your thoughts on mine tree itself uh, on which specific to mine tree i think uh, as you pointed out there will be volatility in this whole open offer event is out of the way and uh, depending on the news flow, how things pan out. As far as fundamentals are concerned, on IT, we are quite uh, sanguine about it, uh, given the uh, the uh, fortunes of other sectors in the market. And IT comes out as a very strong defense right now, given that consumer is a very expensive sector, and pharma, there is no earnings growth. Plus, there are so many headwinds in the pharma. So IT remains the sole uh, defense pack right now with a reasonable valuation. Within that, our preference is more towards uh, tier one, names like Infosys, names like Tech Mahindra. I think IT will give you eight to 10% growth, plus you have a decent capital returns which is going on, be it through dividend or share buybacks. So IT uh, sits in well in a portfolio as a defensive pack, and uh, we are positive on IT. Okay, positive on IT. By the way, uh, Z Entertainment is now down over two and a half percent, so big volumes piling up over there on that increased disclosures um, that, you know, Z Entertainment had to do. They had uploaded uh, related party disclosures on the exchanges and there have been some 
uh, really disconcerting facts coming through. Um, Gautam, hi, good morning. I wanted your thoughts on Imami. Um, you know, on one hand, of course, promoters are selling their assets to repay debt, etc. But um, should that really be a big concern for long-term investors or would you keep the faith here considering that at some point when the economy picks up, you know, Imami would be a big beneficiary there? I tend to agree with the latter part of your uh, statement. I think it's a consumer business. Uh, within Imami, you don't have too much of debt. But what has happened with Imami's uh, FMCG business in the last three years, it has got into a spiral of a uh, slowdown led by so many factors, you know. And plus the portfolio is so climate driven, you know, summer portfolio, winter portfolio. And last two, three years, we have seen disruptions uh, in the climactic conditions also. Plus the fact that they have a heavy dependence on wholesale, which has had a set of challenges post the demonetization as well as GST. So they've gone through a lot of uh, rough weather. Uh, even now as we speak, I don't think this quarter is going to see any material improvement. Stock has corrected, obviously. Stock is now at uh, somewhere around 21, 22 times. But I don't see any change in fortunes in a hurry. Uh, that will be a function of how uh, you know the underlying FMCG business shows earnings recovery. And, and that would be the case for a lot of other FMCG companies as well. Bearing maybe Lever and Titan, which are in their, in their own uh, different world right now. But broader FMCG space has gone through a consumption slowdown in the last quarter. And I think this quarter's numbers will also be a bit somber. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, Gautam, what are your top mid-cap buys right now? That's, that's sort of a tough area to get it. You need to make sure that there's no leverage at the company le level, promoter level, books are clean, you know, uh, there's reasonable growth. Uh, what are the top stocks on your list? Yeah, so be so. What we like in uh, mid cap again, mid cap is a very bottoms of space, so there is no sectoral uh, bias, so to say. But uh, again, our preferences are more driven towards financials, bit of consumption, and then uh, some bit of discretionary uh, lifestyle related stocks. So, what we like in financials is Federal Bank, AU Bank, and RBL. Uh, in consumption, we like ABFRL, we like Trend, Indian Hotels. Uh, then in the agri space, we like uh, Godrej Agrovet there. And in the real estate, uh, we have preference towards Oberoi as well as Brigade. And then in IT, our preference has been uh, towards Sensar of late. So those are uh, a bit of uh, you know a mix of stocks from across sectors in the mid cap. But as I said, in the beginning for mid caps to perform, you need to have far better sentiments, uh, both from a market point of view as well as from an economic point of view, wherein liquidity crisis has not yet uh, got over as far as NBFC is concerned and that is spilling over into the uh, real economy in the last three four months so a uh, lot of uh, hopes are pinned on to budget but I don't know how much uh, it can assuage the sentiment for me more important is uh, the the uh, Jalan committee report and whether it gives any uh, you know room for the government to pump prime the economy or you know basically provide some fiscal stimulus that is where a uh, lot of uh, hopes are settling in and mid caps will obviously be a function of how the sentiment revise. Okay, by the way, just keep an eye on Yes Bank. There's some aggressive selling happening on that stock once again. Uh, and, uh, you know, after opening a bit higher, that one's moving towards the low point and just seeing the, the build up in the future, there's aggressive selling here. Uh, Gautam, any thoughts of uh, sort of bargain buying here in Yes Bank or is this a stock that you would want to give wide berth right now? Uh, Anuj, I would wait for the clarity to emerge on the capital raise because that is very important. They have the lowest tier one capital right now. Uh, within banking as we've been uh, discussing in the past, our preference is more towards SBI, ICIC access uh, on the corporate side and HDFC bank on the retail side in the large cap. Uh, as I said, uh, incrementally in the last couple of weeks, you have seen some uncertainty emerge on certain stress account. And then we have not seen much progress on the NCLT accounts for the big uh, cases like SR or Bush and Steel and Power. So maybe the expected recovery in uh, profits of banking for FY20 may have been pushed back already from 1H to 2H. Uh, but all said and done within the BFSI space, private financials is the only uh, sort of uh, island which is looking relatively uh, benign at the moment and even now one would uh, pin hopes on uh, some, some of these private corporate banks to deliver the 
uh, incremental earnings for Nifty, as it is, as I said, 70% of incremental earnings are expected to come from banks. So within large caps, we continue to still prefer SBI, ICIC and Axis. Okay, Gautam, uh, thank you for talking about a range of stocks uh, with us uh, and uh, appreciate your time. Well, that's the word coming in on a whole host of stocks. The market is still very quiet. The mid-cap index is doing better, though, up almost about two-tenths of a percent. Uh, Imami is now up almost four and a half percent, so recovering from yesterday's damage. Let's take a quick break on that note. When we return, though, we'll talk about the possibility of a complete ban on two- and three-wheelers and the impact it could have on component manufacturers. Jitendra Adia of Atul Auto and Vinnie Mehta of the Automotive Component Manufacturers Association joins in next. Stay tuned.